Welcome back. In this lecture, I'll give a brief overview of containerization and Docker. I'll talk about what containers are and why they're useful. In fact, you've already seen one form of containers in this course already. Mininet emulates virtual networks by connecting containers with virtual tunnels. Containers are an operating system level virtualization technology that makes it possible to run multiple isolated systems, often Linux, on a single underlying host operating system. Unprivileged containers now allow users to run software on the host without actually accessing the hardware. One of the more prominent instances of containers is Docker, but previous versions of containerization include LXC, OpenVZ, and Linux vServers. Containers provide application developers and service providers increased portability by allowing the development of an application in a completely contained host environment. Once an application developer gets an application running in one containerized environment, the application can then be deployed in any environment that can host that container. Another benefit of containerization is isolation, which allows application developers to deploy applications on shared hardware and isolated namespaces and environments. In contrast to virtual machines, which have not only applications and binaries, but also a guest operating system, a container has only the applications needed to run the service for that container and any dependencies that that application has. The underlying host OS and the associated operating system resources are shared, making containers significantly more lightweight and faster to load than virtual machines. In comparison to virtual machines, containers have lower overhead due to their direct use of operating system system calls as opposed to less efficient emulated calls. They do have somewhat less flexibility than virtual machines because the guest OS in the container must be the same as the host OS. In contrast, a virtual machine can run a completely different operating system than that of the underlying host. The file level copy on write semantics provided by containers also offers easier backup and simpler caching behavior than many virtual machines provide. Docker is currently used to deploy distributed applications for continuous integration and delivery of multi-tiered services, for platform-as-a-service deployments, and for application deployment. Let's take a quick look at Docker in action. The Docker website provides detailed instructions for how to install Docker on a variety of host operating systems. Once you have Docker installed, you can use the docker run command to fetch and run a container. In this particular example, I've asked Docker to run a container with the latest release of Ubuntu. Since I didn't already have the image installed, Docker automatically fetched the image and ran it for me. Once I have a local image with the container, I can ask, I can ask Docker to run a command inside that particular container. Here, I simply issue a command to echo hello world inside that particular container. What actually happened when I ran that command was that it ran inside the Docker container that I just fetched. You can also use the docker run command to get an interactive shell inside your container. So here you can see I'm now inside the container looking at a standard Linux installation. Now if I exit the container, I can also show you how I run a command as a daemon. In this case, I'll launch an infinite loop and run it as a daemon. This particular daemon does nothing particularly exciting except print hello world repeatedly. Since I'm running the loop as a daemon, the text doesn't come out to the command prompt but rather to a log that I can view. To see the containers that are running, I can type docker ps. And to see the output of any programs running in that container, I can type docker logs in the name of the container that's running. Here you can see I have a very long string of hello world output to the docker logs. If I want to stop the container, I simply type docker stop in the name of the container. And now when we type docker ps, you can see that no containers are currently running because I've stopped the running container. In conclusion, Containers are a lightweight means of deploying applications in a self-contained environment. They're faster to deploy and more lightweight than virtual machines, making them appealing for deploying things like applications and possibly even network functions. In the future, I expect we may see network functions such as those we've discussed in a previous lecture deployed in containers such as those that Docker provides.